Hello and welcome to digi8.com. In this video, we are going to cover the topic on convenience sampling. Now let's start with what is convenience sampling? Convenience sampling is when the sample for a test is taken from the section of the whole population that is easiest to access. This is generally used for preliminary testing. It comes under non-probability sampling methods. It is other names such as grab sampling, accidental sampling or opportunity sampling. Moving on, as the name suggests, convenience sampling involves picking respondents who are easiest to reach out to. It is based on the convenience of those conducting the test. It is a non-probability sampling method. Respondents might be people in their campuses or offices, commuters, people in malls, parks or other public areas. They simply need to give their time and consent for the test. Otherwise, there is no method or list of attributes to select respondents. Some people mistake convenience testing for random sampling since the sample is selected without a method or randomly. It is not done haphazardly or at random. Moving on to applications of convenience sampling. A drawback with convenience sampling is that the sample might not represent the whole population to be studied. It helps in conducting tests quickly. However, the results might be off the mark. The method can lead to a bias in sampling or a sampling error. That is why researchers advise against the method. Nevertheless, convenience sampling does have its uses. Alternatively, sometimes there is no other choice available. Example: Someone who has started a new venture selling juices might not have the resources for a full-scale market survey. A smaller business will likely get the friends and family of employees to take a survey and ask what they like. Moving on to advantages of convenience sampling. First, cheap to carry out. A great benefit of convenience research is that it does not take much money to carry out. This makes it great for pilot studies. This is when a smaller, less accurate study precedes a larger, more accurate one. Next, easy to access. Researchers do not have to put in much effort to gather data. Instead, the needed sample is taken right from around them. The data can be gathered whenever they want to. This can help them meet deadlines quickly. It also lets them carry out many tests one after the other if they wish. Next, simple to carry out. Convenience testing can be done in a short time, sometimes less than a day. All one needs is a questionnaire distributed among the chosen population. Sure, the accuracy of the test is not reliable. However, some researchers might not need that. They can simply carry out the test and focus their energy on other things. And finally, get information quickly. Some researchers might not want to get a rough idea of population before starting a proper test. Convenience sampling can help them collect this pilot data. It also helps them develop hypotheses for studies to be conducted later on. Some studies also need to be conducted in a short time. Again, convenience testing comes in handy for these cases. It helps start research by gathering information quickly. Not many resources are needed to carry it out. And finally, disadvantages of convenience sampling. First, lack of power. Convenience sampling does not have enough authority to determine how different subgroups behave or think from each other. Next, lacks authenticity. The approach lacks authenticity is the research paradigm. The work is not taken seriously in research circles. And finally, most important of all, sampling bias. The sample selected might not contain all the subgroups of a population. Thus, it not might be representative of the whole population. This makes it difficult to draw conclusions from the sample. Researchers would not even know the scale of the bias in the sampling. The sample is thus the only representative of itself. So that's it, folks. This brings an end to the topic on convenience sampling. These are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Thank you, and see you in the next video.